Hi, my name is Connor Clark, graduating class of Lake Forest High School of 2020, and you're listening to the Lake Forest Podcast. One take. There we go. <laughs> All right, let me do my intro and we'll get into it. Sounds good. Welcome to the Lake Forest Podcast, a podcast about the lovely city of Lake Forest, featuring topics like lo local news, sports, music, people, and food. My name is Pete, and I'm joined with my co-host, Scoo Walker. We both live in Lake Forest. Scoo, how you doing, my friend? Doing great today. Friday. Friday? You had the, uh, the car show last night, which you didn't tell me about. I told you about it. You didn't show up, but it was a you great turnout. You texted me like a half an hour before. I need at least 45 minutes notice. You're, you're a, a less than a block away. First of all, I, and I've only lived here three years. I don't even know what the car show is. Saddle Anyways. up the horse and ride him over. All right. <laughs> Uh, hey, we got a sponsor for the show, Neuro Noodle. Hey, athletes, get a brain map when you get your physical every year. In case you get funked, you got a baseline to compare it to. Get a brain map now at neuronoodle.com. Hey, Dakota Insurance handles all your insurance needs, Scoo. They got right. country, country and Western, <laughs> residential and commercial. Runge and, you know. Yeah. All that stuff. I hear you. Well, the life insurance, insurance long-term care, we got it all. Podcast insurance? We do. All right. Ask for Pam, dakotainsurancegroup.com. Don't ask for Scoo. We'll be on the golf course in 31 <laughs> minutes. No, that's not true. <laughs> okay. One of the things we like to do here at the Lake Forest Podcast is to shed some light on local peeps doing good things. We recently had Steve Douglas, uh, new media educator at Lake Forest High School. What a great dude, man. I'll yeah. tell you. And then uh, he brought up Connor Clark's name, a uh, recent graduate. Uh, and I don't know anything. And then I started looking into it. Holy crap. This ESPN, this guy's in college. I mean, he's got a Husker Nation. Connor Clark, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having me, guys. I'm glad to be here. All right. I'm the newbie here. Scoo, tell me about Connor. How do we know him? Well, no, Connor, he was uh, doing all the sports broadcasting on the radio, TV projections for football, basketball. God, Connor, what, all four years? Or uh, sophomore yeah. year on? So if, I was going, years. so if I was going to Chiefs, Watching the stream of uh, the scouts, you'd hear Connor. This is, this is the guy. Okay, big time. That is the man. We everyone would think, who's that older guy talking? That's, <laughs> that's Connor. <laughs> Connor, how'd you get into broadcasting? Did did, did you know uh, Steve Douglas uh, before you took the class, or you took new media and you figured it out, or you're ahead of the game? What's your story? Yeah, so my freshman year of high school, um, I I was pretty involved in playing sports, so I played football my freshman year of high school, um, and then basketball tryouts came around, and that was a sport that's my favorite sport still to this day. But that was one that uh, I would play like throughout middle school and stuff, and I was really anticipating making the team that year. And looking back on it, it's kind of like a, a stupid story to be all upset about back in the day when I was fourteen years old, but. Um, I didn't end up making the team, but I still wanted to be involved in some way, shape, or form. So uh, I reached out to Coach Lascala, who's the varsity uh, head coach for the boys' basketball program, and he put me in contact with uh, Mr. Douglas. Um, I'd never heard of Mr. Douglas before that, um, so it was probably one of the more important email conversations I've ever had in my life to this point. So um, he set me up. I did about two basketball games just to kind of test the waters my freshman year, um, and Sophomore year, we really picked it up. We did every football home game and we did every boys basketball home game. And then we picked it up even more. My junior year, we did an away football game as well as all the home games. Um, and then we incorporated girls basketball home games as well as boys basketball home games. And then our my senior year, 2019-20 uh, was uh, every home football game and then every home girls basketball game, every home boys basketball game, including an away boys basketball game at Stevenson High School. And the girls hosted a regional that year, which was even more exciting. And they ended up winning that regional, which was a great game to be a part of. So there was, there was a lot of stuff going on, but um, it, it was a ton of fun. 
that beats bagging groceries. <laughs> that is for sure. That is for sure. <laughs> so, so you got any pointers for us? Uh, <laughs> when you, your, your first few broadcasts, uh, were you nervous uh, or nobody was, you had plenty of practice. You know, we start, we started this podcast in January. Like I said, we're less crappy than we were six months ago. You know, you got to have goals in life, uh, Connor. Uh, What are some things you remember about your first few broadcasts that maybe you can uh, give us some pointers on? Yeah. I mean, I, to go back to your point, was I nervous? Absolutely. I I was very nervous. Um, I mean, I did a couple of things in eighth grade, just on like a a YouTube channel, just to, for fun, like, for instance, like calling a Cubs game off of a TV or something, just, it it was a hobby of mine and I thought it was interesting. Um, But yeah, once you're like there um, in the action for the first time and you're you're at the event and it's like, oh boy, I better not screw this up. And (laughs) I mean, we were, I, I know we were playing Stevenson, one of the first games that I ever called and it was, they were still really good. And I was like, okay, this is a great opportunity because we were pretty solid as well. Um, so I'm like, oh, this is going to be a great game. But I was like so nervous that I was going to screw it up. And um, I was doing it with somebody who I'd never done it with before. And it was just kind of, everything was kind of thrown at me. Um, but, you know, you live and you learn. And there, there was a lot of experiences to learn from that's for sure. <laughs> um, and I'm very glad to say that my product freshman year was a lot worse than my product when it came to my senior year right uh how much preparation do you have to do for a broadcast you know prepare because people people think yeah you just go there show up with a mic and you do your thing uh please tell me you do some preparation because just doing this (laughs) podcast i'm trying to be prepared (laughs) yes i do i do do a pretty good amount of preparation um i mean in high school it was a little tougher because information about players is a lot harder to come by versus in college because obviously college there's so many different media outlets covering a team but um I mean over the year as it progressed I mean I knew our team pretty well because a I knew a lot of people on the team already and b you're you're watching them every single game you do and it's a different opponent um so that's where the most of the difficulty probably came into is just learning about the other team um, if they have any college recruits, um, what different storylines you can tie into the game um, and just how you can compare the two teams and say, oh, is this going to be a blowout or is this going to be a good game? Um, and then getting kind of different quotes from coaches and talking to them and looking at scouting reports um, and just kind of formulating your own notes. That's something that I, I did as high school went along is just kind of finding a system that works for me. So like, I don't have to be searching around scrambling for a different stat or different information. I already know where it is. Um, and one thing I've definitely learned highlighters are your friend. So I've used those a lot uh, when, when doing notes as well. So I would say a pretty decent amount of preparation went into each game. Uh, a couple a couple of long nights in, in high school when we had two to three games a week, uh, be there at like, 7 a.m. wouldn't leave until like 9, 30, 10, almost some days. So um, long days, but it was fun. Um, and uh, I mean, a lot of, a lot of good experience came out of it as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so easy, right? Now, how the heck did you get to ESPN? Tell us about that in Nebraska. Come on, man. Yes. Don't, don't down sell. <laughs> so um Winter of my senior year, I got a text from um, a, a person I know, Rick Pisa, who works for the Big Ten Network. And he goes on um, a guy who I'm going to be working for now, Chris Schmidt. He does a radio show out in Nebraska uh, for ESPN. And he's on a show quite frequently as a guest. So he put me in contact with him before I graduated. And we would kind of chat on and off. I like sent him a, a podcast episode that I did. And um, just to kind of build a, a network out there because I, I still wasn't completely sure I was going there. Um, I was, I was fairly certain, but I hadn't like officially committed. Um, so it was just trying to create a network out there. Cause I didn't really know m- many media people out there at the time. And, um, I mean, we've kept in contact. He's come on a podcast that I do with a, with a fellow now going to be sophomore of mine at Nebraska, um, and he wanted me to, to work on a show. So he put me in contact with his managers, uh, did the interview process and 
was hired, which I'm uh, very thankful for. And it's, it's a great opportunity and I'm super excited to get started. That's impressive, man. Scoo. So Connor, did you choose Nebraska because you wanted to do the, this field or was yeah. it after the fact? Yeah, I chose Nebraska because of their uh, journalism and communications college. Um, it's about the size of Lake Forest High School, student-wise. The whole entire college is like 25,000 kids. But um, 1,600 kids for a journalism school is a little bit on the smaller side, which I kind of took the approach of less people equals more opportunity. Um, so that was a big draw for me. Um, I also liked how, I mean, the, the campus is obviously a big thing when you go on a college tour as well. What, what do you like? What do you don't like? Um, and it was one of the, I, I think it was actually the first college I ever visited, um, which is kind of funny that I ended up choosing it. Um, but I, I just really like the, it's very community oriented out there. I mean, obviously they're, they're one of the biggest fan bases and one of the most passionate fan bases in the entire country. So that was really appealing to me. And the fact that it's in the big 10, I mean, growing up watching Northwestern sports and stuff like that, just being in the heart of big 10 country was also a big draw. So um, those are probably the three big reasons. Um, and it's been great so far. There's been a lot of opportunities to be had despite COVID and virtual things and all that. So um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. All my so, money went, to, all my money went to Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine a mistake. To mine to Indiana. <laughs> So did you graduate from uh, Indiana? Oh, Bobby you know Knight. That? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, Didn't oh, know. yeah. Didn't know that. So, so Connor, um, how's Nebraska going to be? Are the Cornhuskers going to be back to the <laughs> Cornhuskers of old? or? I wouldn't say the Cornhuskers of old. That's, I think that's setting the bar a little bit too high. But um, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm hoping for a bowl appearance. That would be great, uh, considering we haven't had one since I was a freshman in high school. So uh, that would be nice. That would also be good for Scott Frost's job. So I'm guessing six and six, seven to five area. Apparently we have the 10th hardest schedule in the country. So we'll see how, how everything pans out. It'll be tough. You got one of the McCaffreys on the squad, right? We did. He actually just transferred this past off season. So he's did at not. Rice now. He's at Rice. Yeah. Rice. <laughs> Nebraska to Rice? <laughs> well, he went to he went to Louisville for like four days and then he realized he probably wasn't going to have a shot at the starting QB position. And then wow. he transferred to Rice. It's a lot of he, that, he wanted to play <laughs> yeah. He wanted to play quarterback really yeah. badly, but he's kind of more of a utility guy. He's he's an extremely good athlete. I mean, we had him run the ball out of the backfield last year, and he could make good throws here and there. Not the greatest thrower, but um, he's kind of more of the utility guy, but apparently his heart is definitely set on playing quarterback, so that's why he ended up at Rice. Oh, bless him. Okay. Uh, is Spielman play, still play down there? Uh, he did not. He he also transferred. He went to TCU. I think he just graduated, though. He did just graduated. So. Okay, all right. Played played with his dad at the Southern Illinois University. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah. In Carbondale. Yes. So 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 Connor, you, you took Steve's uh, or sorry, Mr. Douglas's uh, new media class, uh, and it's an elective. Don't you think that should be like a required course to take instead of taking like two study classes? You should, you know, take that class because doesn't that set you up for the future and technology, social media and whatnot? I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I was listening to your guys episode actually with Mr. Douglas and he was talking about it as well. And um, yeah, I mean, if, if you're a second semester senior, I see the appeal of two study halls because I've been there. Yeah. But um, I do think new media is a great class. I don't know if it necessarily should be required, but the way things are trending, I could understand if it was required. Um, but one thing that I have kind of noticed is a lot of people who I know from high school went on to play uh, D3 athletics. And something that you could tie in here is the new name, image, and likeness rules. And you can make money as a student athlete. And a lot of that plays into technology and using websites and mm -hmm. marketing yourself. And that new media teaches a lot of that. And it's, it's, if you go to new media in the high school, I mean, it's not like 
it's not like going to AP Euro or something. It's not like cr- crazy difficult. It's a it's a good creative class. It's and Mr. Douglas describes it a, a little bit of a break in your day, but you're still creatively thinking um, and trying to figure things out and learning new things. But uh, I think that's a big time because I know a lot of people who are are trying to do that kind of stuff and. Um, it, it does teach you a lot about technology, more the advanced stuff um, as well. I know they're trying to shift to Adobe stuff. They've used Final Cut Pro for quite some time now, but um, I think that could be a very important thing. Um, and I know Mr. Douglas preaches the use of your phone in very useful ways. Um, so, and especially, I mean, my phone has, what, three cameras on the back here? Yeah, And yeah. the quality of it is ridiculous for a phone. So if you could use that more often, like... Uh, it's, it's a crazy thing that you just carry around with you, yourself all the time. So, um, I think it's a great class. Um, if things keep trending the way they are, I could see it be, re- see it being required. Um, but I mean, I would definitely suggest taking it over two study halls. I think it's a, a much better use of your time. All right. That's a good, that's a good sell. Well, it's one of those, one of those classes where you sit there later on and Connor, you're, you're not there yet, but. Later on in life, you say, you know, that AP Euro class, what the hell am I applying, you know, in my everyday life where mm-hmm. you go, then you look at it and you go, well, the new media thing, I'm doing all this crap all the time, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, I think that's where, you know, why aren't these required? Because you're going to get more out of the new media later on in life. Well, not later on, but shorter time in life and all that. So why not? But well, the, the hard part is the minute you graduate from it, uh, it's outdated, you know, unless you keep right. up with it, there's always something, you know, new, but you, somebody's got to, you know, it takes a teacher to create that spark to get the interest to do it and to keep up with it. And Connor is a great example and Steve right. Douglas, uh, a great example. So, so what does a typical week look like for you, uh, Connor? Because I mean, shoot, you're, you're calling games, you're going to school. I know it's different in July than it is in October. Uh, what does October look like for you when you, when you have all the events? Yeah. I mean, I'm not really sure what October is going to look like for me yet, but yeah. um, I mean, I could give you a day in the life from my last semester at school. Yeah, yeah, Cause yeah, I was yeah. quite busy. Yeah. Um, Cause I was working for our student radio station. So uh, it's very similar to the job that I'm going to have at ESPN the fall in this fall. So, um, I mean, a week in the life, I had half my classes in person, half of them were online. So doing that, um, I would like to get up kind of early, like as early, I say like nine, nine thirty AM. So maybe not that <laughs> early, but, um, try and get out of bed and do something good. Uh, go to class, um, find time to do something physically active. And then if I have a game to call that week, do preparation for that. If I'm producing a live game, uh, make sure I'm there on time for that being early, make sure the announcers are set up for everything. If I'm doing a game for big 10 network plus make sure I have even more information because that's on TV. So people can see you and you don't want to mess up your intro on camera. Um, so there's a lot of different things depending on what I'm doing. Um, if, and once a week I'll, I'll do my podcast with, uh, with one of my now roommates, um, which is just about Husker sports. So if we're having a guest on that week, doing research, that's going to cater to what they cover, um, and finding good conversational points to that, that are relevant as well at the time that people want to hear, because I mean, not many people in Lincoln, Nebraska are wondering, Oh, what does Connor Clark have to say about this? But if we have a established media guest, they're going to be interested. So, oh, what is say a guest we've had on the show, Parker Gabriel, have to say about this? Um, and then that'll link us to our show. And um, I mean, all the media members that we've had on that show too have been absolutely awesome. They've given some great stuff. Stuff like it's like they're on Fox College Football Kickoff or whatever. Like that's the type of stuff they bring to us. So, um, yeah, that, I mean, that's what kind of a, a week. And the life looks like, I'm sure this October with football being at full capacity, it's going to be insane. Um, and obviously a full class schedule in person as well this year. So it's going to be a big transition, but I, I'm looking forward to it. And honestly, I think the busier you are, the better, because it's better than sitting around doing nothing. So I, that's the way I look at it. And you're getting paid. Yes. You got your job, then you went to college. That is... 
is a great system. I would recommend that system <laughs> to, to everybody. Love that system. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so all the kids at Lake Forest High, juniors, seniors, freshmen, sophomores, you got any advice? Uh, let's start with the freshmen, work our way up to the seniors. If you could go back in time, anything you do differently, zero-based thinking. Let's help the, the little kids out there. Yeah, I mean, if it was me personally, if I could go back to my freshman year, I probably would have taken the class had I known about it. <laughs> um, and that would have probably helped me start even earlier. Um, but I'm not going to complain at the point that I started at originally. So, um, I mean, I went to St. Mary's for elementary and middle school. So smaller than Deer Path, smaller than, than Lake Bluff Elementary and Middle School. So um, it was kind of a big jump from, from middle school to freshman year, just because a, the amount of people, I mean, I knew a decent amount of them from travel baseball and stuff like yeah. that back in middle school, but um, just that kind of transition and the amount of like the, the, the freedoms that you have, the switching from a private school to a big public high school is a complete 180. So having kind of self-discipline in that area, and I know it's hard when you're 14, 15 years old, you're just kind of starting out and um yeah, so I, I wish I took that my freshman year. Um, again, I'm I'm fine with taking it. The the, the six semesters, I know that the the, right. the holy grail is taking it all eight um, for new media. But yeah, and then after that, just kind of throw yourself into things if you're a freshman. Like, there's plenty of clubs, and I know it was harder this year because COVID and everything. So sophomores are kind of still like freshmen. So yeah. just kind of throw yourself into things do some things. I mean, I ran cross country and track my last two years of high school, something I thought I would never do. I hated running, but I ended up doing it with a bunch of friends and I, I had a great time. So just kind of find what you, you like to do. And if you don't like it, that's fine. You can switch and you don't have to pour your heart into soul, heart and soul and every like little thing that you do. If you say, Oh, you don't like this, you can switch. Um, and there, there's plenty of different opportunities. And if you want to start something, you can do that too. I mean, that's kind of the route that I took. If you want to start doing something that's not already being offered, people are there to help you out. You definitely have the resources there to help you start it. So um, that's kind of the advice I would give to, to underclassmen. I think the yeah. upperclassmen kind of know what they're doing by this point. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that, that would be my advice. Okay. It's getting that routine down, that schedule, that you know, right. success system, whatever it is. Once you get mm -hmm. into it, it's like when you first go to college, you got to figure out when you're going to study, when you're going to party. I know you don't party, Connor, but you, you, you got to balance uh, the two. I get it. Scoo, what else we got for the fine uh, young lad here? Well, you know, I, I think, Connor, you, you have, uh, I know there's people that have done what you've done at the high school before you, but I think you set the, I think you set the bar. I think people now are following you, wanting to, you know, follow your footsteps, so to speak, and see your success. So I think that's phenomenal. And, you know, for everyone coming through the high school now, that's, there's an opportunity there to do what you were doing. So that's a, you know, be proud of that. And, you know, you'll look back at it and see that's pretty cool thing, what you started. And I think you did start it. Well, thank level. you for that. I appreciate that. And yeah, it's... I remember a freshman year, I'm like, Who is, <laughs> who's this guy dragging all right. this crap out there? What are they going to be doing? And then as it went <laughs> on, it's like, wow, these guys are good. So yeah, yeah, lots of lots of weird looks uh, dragging all that equipment <laughs> up to the press box over there at West Campus. But yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of crazy to see the amount of kind of feedback from the community that it was getting, um, yeah. especially when I turned to a junior as well, because sophomore year was kind of establishing the entire thing. But I mean, everybody was into it. I was I was shocked. Like we were getting like we do basketball and football recaps and right. edit them in new media and they would get thousands of views and. I was like, whoa. And then like, I remember there, there was this one instance where we, uh, we had a, the, it was the playoff game against Deerfield. You had to buy tickets at the school the week prior. And I went up to go get some for uh, uh, my parents because I was, I was a student manager that year as well. So we couldn't call the games because IHSA has some weird deal that has the rights for those types of games. But um, so I was getting tickets for my parents and I walk up to the table and the guy sitting there like knew who I was and I'd never seen him before in my life. I'm like, well, it was kind of shocking. So the, the impact that it's left has been overwhelmingly positive and I've been super surprised and 
Um, I, I hope it gets continued. I know uh, a recent graduate, Peter Elliott, has done a great job doing yep. that stuff. He's going to Syracuse for journalism. Um, so I hope there are plenty more in his footsteps as well. So uh, it'll be fun to see how the future kind of unfolds in that type of area in the high school. Connor, impressive as hell, man. I mean, shit, <laughs> Thank you. I, I wish I could go back in time. <laughs> Uh, who would you suggest coming on the show? Peter Elliott, would that be a start? Who would, uh, who could we piggyback, piggyback off of uh, you on here? Who would be a natural? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Peter's been, he's been fantastic. He's more the, the writing side as well. Uh, but sure. I mean, he's a phenomenal writer. Um, I mean, there are, there are plenty of good people at the high school. I know you guys just talked to Mr. Douglas. That would have been a guess I would have suggested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, though he's a good guest. Um, I mean, really just asking around the, the high school, too, because I know that a lot of the, the younger ones just had that crazy experience with Vince Vaughn at yeah, the, yeah, at the yeah. film camp. So, I mean, well, that would you... be something cool to talk about. And I don't know. There, there's a lot of things in Lake Forest that are going on still that I still have no idea about just because I haven't been around too often ever since high school ended. But um, I'm sure there are plenty of good people out there. Like the car show, Scoo? <laughs> ah, that's going to be a big one, isn't it? It's, it was cool. There were some good cars there, Pete. You would have liked it. See, I had no idea that was happening. <laughs> See, me, me and you, Connor, we're like, we're like this. Hey, man, it, can we check back with you? I know you're going to be busy in the fall, but uh, if you get a little break in there, we'd love to have you come back on and give us an update on how you're doing because you're, you're an inspiration. The teacher that taught you is an inspiration. And then hopefully we can spark uh, – some kid out there to you know follow in your footsteps out there connor yeah absolutely yeah if it i'll, I'll let you guys know when i'm available sometime in the chaos that is college yeah, football yeah, season yeah. And, and and we can get something worked out but yeah this he is might have to talk to his agent i, I don't oh. we got lucky this time <laughs> oh you need you need an agent oh me i me. wish <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it'll Maybe happen someday. quicker than it'll happen quicker than you think. We'll remember this this podcast. Oh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks, Connor. Connor. Uh, thank you guys. It was great. Thank you. Well, thanks for everybody for listening to the Lake Forest Podcast. Please give us five stars on Apple Podcasts and smash that like button on Facebook, Instagram, and follow us on Twitter. Let us know what you like to hear about in the upcoming shows. Again, I'm Pete, and I can be reached at Pete at LakeForestPodcast.com. The link will be in the podcast notes below. Uh, on behalf of my co-host, Scoo Walker, if you really, really, really like us, you can buy us a beer on Patreon. Patreon slash Lake Forest Podcast. We thank you for listening. Cue the band. <laughs>